This is wonderful. I am, I am honored to uh, MC the My Little Pony panel. And uh, really, I think IDW has picked wonderful people to uh, capture the My Little Pony experience in comic form. And it's uh, because of these people. I'm going to start all the way at the end there. The wonderful interior artist, Andy Price. Cartoonist on her own as well, but uh, she, she writes wonderful uh, My Little Pony stories. The impenetrable Katie Cook. I don't know what that I'm pregnant right now, no, so that's no, really not true. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. So, yes, point yeah. that out. Well, that she's appropriately, you know, so that's all right. Yes. And uh, one of the cover artists extraordinaire, uh, a dear friend of mine, Mr. Tony Fleece. <laughs> Dude, you guys, she's I've got a real bad rap here. I do a lot of covers, but I also uh, have been known to do a series. All right. I've done micro series and annuals. That's true. I'm tired of this. All right, no, I'm sorry. Represent. It's all I good. think you owe Tony dinner. Thank you, Tony. Clearly. All right, we'll, we'll settle up in New York. I understand. Um, I want to ask, uh, really, all of you, your, uh, your, your first My Little Pony experience in terms of, you know, what was your first exposure to My Little Pony, Tony? I was in a hotel room. I had a convention, and I turned on the TV that had the hub, and they had this My Little Pony was on. And I was like, holy crap, there's new My Little Pony. <laughs> that was it. Because you remember the toy? Yeah. Yeah. I remember my sisters watched the show when, back when, before when they looked like horses more. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I, watched the, I watched the show in the hotel, and then that was sort of it until I got hired to draw the show. Excellent. Katie, were you like a My Little Pony kid? I I was a small girl in the 80s. Therefore, I liked ponies before these guys liked ponies. You're an OG, uh, OP, <laughs> original <laughs> pony fan. I liked them before they were cool. That a girl. Um, but no, it's, you know, it's I, I played with My Little Pony toys when, when I was a kid, and then generation two and three I paid absolutely no attention to. And then my older brother, I was like, are you watching the new My Little Pony? My older brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, you need to. It's great. <laughs> so I bought uh, the first season on iTunes and immediately bought the season pass to the second season. <laughs> and I looked at my husband and I was like, this is great. <laughs> We're pony people now. <laughs> I have a daughter, so it's okay. <laughs> we have an excuse. Uh, but no, it's, uh, I've, I've loved the new incarnation of it, so it's, it's so much fun. Awesome. Andy? Uh, with me, um, a friend of mine tried to introduce me and my wife to it. Uh, said, you know, have you watched the new My Little Pony and everything? I was like, I'm not going to watch that. That's for girls. <laughs> and uh, my wife ended up watching a couple of episodes. And I'm sure many of you can attest to the fact, you know, you watch your first one, you're like, okay, sh show me another. <laughs> okay, one more. This is great. Um, but she was like that. She watched her first one, and she was like, okay, this is cute. She watched another one, and it had a uh, Benny Hill Yakety Sax parody. <laughs> and she's like, okay, this is, this is pretty good. And then she saw uh, the episode Dog and Pony Show with the Diamond Dogs. For those of you that don't know, the entire episode is a veiled David Bowie reference. <laughs> and she's a big David Bowie fan. She's like, that's it. This show can do no wrong. <laughs> and, um, and she got me hooked on it uh, probably about two months before we started talking about doing the book. So I just got it under the wire as a fan. Fantastic. And yeah, that is, and, I, and honestly, the comic book is the same way for you guys. Who, who reads the, uh, the My Little Pony comic? Show of hands. Excellent. All right, and so for the rest of you, you got to check it out because if you do like the animated series, you're going to love what these guys are doing in the book because much like the Diamond Dog parody and the Yakety Sack stuff, these are the kinds of things that all three of them put into the book. I know I love the, uh, the Magnum Pony that uh, showed up in the, uh, in the first issue. Well, there was a Burt Reynolds Pony too, correct? Uh, no, it's um, Earl Hickey from My Name is Earl. Oh, shame on me. <laughs> 
open to your own interpretation because they are they're little veiled references and that's the great thing like great parody and stuff these guys put a lot of humor in the book beyond the story itself and there's also humor in the story so favorite poems down the road I'll start here yes sir uh, I like to draw Princess Celestia a lot I think I, I like Applejack more and more uh, as I watch uh, I like Rainbow Dash I don't really have a one favorite I like the ponies I would say my favorite though is probably Princess Celestia. But I think she should probably be like a queen because she seems to have like queen powers. Like she's a god. <laughs> <laughs> Needs uh, Twilight Sparkle. Awesome. I mean, uh, my mom was a librarian, so I tell everybody that Spike was my power animal <laughs> because I spent every summer shoveling books. Because that was back before the internet. <laughs> when you went to the library, now you can go online and do that all day. I didn't have that. My mom would just be like, oh, you have to sit here for eight hours. Here, have some books to shell. <laughs> <laughs> and that was every summer from um, birth until I was 16. <laughs> and Andy? Uh, for me, it's Applejack. Uh -oh. Applejack is my favorite of the main six, but my favorite character overall is Princess Luna. Awesome. Shout out some uh, favorites, uh, kids. Who's, uh, who's their favorite uh, ponies? Please, yeah, go right out and say it. Anybody, yeah, do it. Good, good. Who is your least favorite? Ooh, that's even better. Who's your least yeah, favorite? Who knows the line? Least favorite. Rainbow Dash. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for Celestia, alright. You don't like the chase, my like queen? How can you not like Chris Celestia? Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. no, I like it. I like the debate. Yeah, no, it's sure. good. If it was up to me, if I could draw a book of just Applejack, Luna, and Chrysalis, I'd be, that'd be it. I'd be done. That'd be the, the weirdest book ever. Yes. <laughs> How, maybe a little backup story of Rarity. Like, are you guys pretty free to tell the stories that you want? How much kind of interference or guidance do you get from Hasbro to say, well, wait a minute, we can't do that? Um, I haven't really submitted anything yet that they've said, oh, God, no. Mm -hmm. um, and keep in mind, I'm the person that Rex wrote an email and said, can I do two issues about Big Mac finding a box of nails? <laughs> <laughs> And when they wrote back, what? I said, it'll be funny, trust me. <laughs> and they went, okay. So, not Apparently, they do. It's like, oh, whatever. It sells well, let her do what she wants. They're actually pretty good with us. Yeah. Um, their big concern is to make sure that we stay within the same flavor as the show. Sure. And that... We don't um, cross any streams. Right. The, the biggest problems we've run into really is if we have decided to do something that they also have planned for the show. Um, you know, Noah, you can't do that. We're doing that in season three or we're doing that in season four. Sure. We're doing something else with that character. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Understood. We ran into that with the Rarity Micro Series. Um, I submitted a pitch and they went, no, that's an episode from season four. And I was like, oh, at least I'm going in the right direction. <laughs> um, so I had to completely change my idea. Um, which ended up working out for, for the best. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's just trying to keep everything in, in line with the show. I mean, I don't think I would ever pitch something that didn't match the characters. Um, you know, I'm not going to have Applejack go on, you know, I remember spree that. But that. <laughs> um, well, not until at least issue 20. <laughs> As I tell people, Rainbow Dash is not going to spray no wing, and Applejack is not going to take her out the pasture and shoot her. That is just really not <laughs> We're going to have to put you down, Rainbow Dash. Very special for you. Man. Sorry. So, tell, tell people about some of the arcs that, you know, how I'm reading the book, kind of like some of the stories that you have, the adventures you put them all this through since starting. Well, for me, it's um, with the first arc. Uh, they really either wanted me to do something with Luna or do something with Chrysalis. Um, and I pitched two stories, and they picked the, uh, the Chrysalis arc. So I got to write a four-issue arc about Queen Chrysalis. And I really got to explore her as a character and write kind of an epic little adventure and use all of the main six. 
use the cutie mark crusaders doing what I think they do best, which is being annoying children. <laughs> and anybody that thinks I write them too annoying does not have children. I do. I know how to write a child. <laughs> because they are annoying. And I say that with the deepest love and affection for my children. <laughs> but, oh my god. <laughs> What's that? I just answered that three seconds ago. What's that? Why? Oh my god! Why? Because why? 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 <laughs> and, uh, and I really like that I really get to put my sense of humor and my spin on things and, you know, for the you know, whenever I write something, you know, Andy and I have been friends long enough that he gets it. And I don't even need to explain some of the jokes to him. It's like I will write just a little note and he will just go crazy with it. And um, that's why I think that, you know, when Andy and I are on a book, it's this weird collaborative codependent relationship <laughs> um, of like if, if you took Andy away from me, I would break down into tears. <laughs> Um, and that was just it. It's like it's just a fun arc, and the same thing with the rarity micro series. I wrote a love letter to uh, to the town that I, I'm from, which is Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is this hippie commune of a town that just so happens to have the University of Michigan in it. Uh, but everything there has alfalfa sprouts on it, and it's it's the green and pity, and they they strive for that kind of crap. <laughs> so, so when we did the rarity issue, the rarity was. She's very stressed, she's got a fashion show, she's very tired, and the rest of them are like, you need to just chill out, go take a little vacation before your big show. So she goes to what she thinks is a beauty spa for a week's vacation, it turns out to be a hippie commune. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and everybody, every burnt out hippie that I grew up with is in that issue. <laughs> and hilarity ensues. And it is, it's fun. I think it's one of the, the best things that I've personally written um, for the Pony stuff so far. Um, uh, and same thing with um, uh, the Big Mac story arc, uh, Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair. And then my love letter to 1980s teen romantic comedy starts next month, which is called Nay Anything. <laughs> for all the parents out there. <laughs> How does the pony hold the boom box over their head? Logistics. But they're boots. Alright, I have They have like magic sticky tape. We call it some bendable, bendable ponies, man. Yeah. Did people figure out your awesome background joke in the in the Big Mac yeah, arc? Yeah, it's uh, in the Big Mac arc, all the main six are referring to something going on, like a big story. And I thought no one is gonna get this. And then like the segment came out, somebody must have just Googled bees, sunstone ponies. So I'm like, oh, that's from the 1987 My Little Pony movie, The End of Flutter Valley. Gosh, it's like, God. Classic. <laughs> so every once in a while, we give a tip of the hat to the original ponies. Yeah. Because we I wouldn't be doing important. this if they weren't there. So. Now, I see small fans in the audience. I have to ask, uh, how many bronies are in the audience? Sorry, come on, bronies. Woo! Nice. Yeah. Man. Wow. So yeah, on it, and, and really, guys, I I, I I want you guys to stand up and ask questions, and really, kids, I want you to as well. Uh, if you're more comfortable doing it from the chairs, that's fine. But yeah, I, I just honestly, I love this whole thing, both man, woman, and child that loves my little pony. But uh, yeah, how's it? How's how's the brony thing? Then? My husband has a lot of opinions on who's the best pony, even though he says he's not a brony. <laughs> that's right. It's good. Rainbow Dash. Awesome. <laughs> Which is why I can try and like, belittle her whenever possible. <laughs> Bronies chime in. What are your favorite? Uh, who are your favorite ponies? AJ Verity. Like it. Princess Luna. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already nice. went over this question. <laughs> well, but I didn't hear from I didn't hear from the adult bronies, and that's why I want to hear some of the adult bronies. That's why the guys young young bronies are shy. Anybody who's Fluttershy is their favorite should be way too shy to call out the Fluttershy. <laughs> you should be traveling in your chair going, Fluttershy. <laughs> we should just stop every ten minutes and ask again who everybody's favorite is. There you go. <laughs> that's true. That's kind of my plan. That's excellent. Uh, please, you got a question? What are you guys' favorite episodes? Oh, good. What are your favorite episodes? Um, you got one. Well, I don't know. You do a bunch. It's cool. I like that time that Doc's one that Andy mentioned. 
much. I do like the Diamond Dogs. Uh, I have to admit, I really like the episode of um, Rarity and Canterlot. Uh, Sweet Elite. Sweet Elite. That's, uh, that's a good one. Because um, the, the song in it is just so, so catchy. For me, it's mostly the Rarity episodes are usually my favorite um, because she's comedy gold. She is. She's just such a little diva. No. What's the one where, uh, where Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara have a party and they get there? Is that Cutie Mark Chronicles? Call the Cutie. Yeah, I like that one. They are yeah. awful. <laughs> they are terrible. I say really terrible things to the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I have names for them that I yeah. cannot say in this room. They're not going to be in the comments. You had a question uh, up here? Yeah. What episode, and how do you know about Transpot? It is, uh, <laughs> it is when, wow. when, well, I see it's, it's a child movie. Um, yeah, I was going to say, very child friendly. Cool. Oh, nice. It's a thing. But no, it's um, when uh, their baby, uh, Pinkie Pie is babysitting um, to little yeah. fillies, and one of them starts crawling on the ceiling from that scene. And even my husband went, is that from Train <laughs> <laughs> I'm very impressed you know that that's fantastic. The media's really picked up on uh, grown ups being into My Little Pony, but I don't think enough people are talking about children being into train spotting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the Big Lebowski. Because yeah. yeah. that was the one that was, I was like, it was just reference to an R rated movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was a reference to R rated Yeah, I was going to say, I think Train Spotting. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that he would probably do it, I would love to see Jeff Bridges wear his shirt with his pony <laughs> on from that movie. That'd be cool. But yeah, that was uh, that was the, where we took the took the baton and ran. It's like, okay, if they're going to reference, yeah, they're allowed Lowski to do that. Or, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> Benny Hill, uh, also very adult. Um, so that's why you know in the first issue. You know, in the background scenes, I had the Blues Brothers, and yeah. I had Magnum P.I., and which is like that. But the one where I really pushed the envelope to see, okay, is Hasbro going to let me play, is the Donald Sutherland pony from yeah. Invasion of the Body Snap. <laughs> in the script, in the script it says, Donald Sutherland like pony. And I was like, that like, I'm putting like, Donald Sutherland. And he just put Donald Sutherland, and I was like, oh. And for those of you that don't know, the Invasion of the Body Snatchers, classic film from the 50s, which oh, was these kids are all the 70s, right? He's the last image of Donald Sutherland from the film has been turned into an internet meme, which has run around for years, and it's a shot of him going. <laughs> so I drew a pony going. <laughs> and he has Donald Sutherland's hair. And Hasbro is like. Oh, <laughs> oh sir, you, you got a question? Um, basically, um, we were told, first off, not to use Discord. I think it's because they had the episode planned with him, and until that ban is lifted, um, until they say, yeah, go ahead and use him now, um, nope. And the other thing is that I would like to make my own villain for an arc. Um, so that's the first, first plan is to try and come up with something original instead of doing a rehash of a show villain, because as much as I love Queen Chrysalis, as much as I like that they made a new uh, nightmare persona, uh, that wasn't us, but you know, they, that's, 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 you know, that's Luna again, but as a different villain. I want to try something new. I want the chance to create a new villain, so people can do fan art of my character. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have enough fan art of Cranky Doodle Ryan. I <laughs> wish we could tell you what's it. I can't tell you what's gonna what's gonna happen, but it's a good. So. Awesome. That's what that, the gentleman over there has a question. Young man, didn't you have a question with the hat? In blue. Why don't you raise your hand? Is he still just telling us who his favorite pony is again? That's all right. It's Fluttershy. He's been saying it. Excellent. In the back with the black hat, sir. Yeah, I was going to ask that question as well. Yeah, how did y'all get the gigs? I have the world's dumbest answer for that because I went on Twitter and I said, I like the new My Little Pony. And the editor, who I know, 
um, and likes my work and has been trying to get me to do some Godzilla stuff, but the Godzilla people kept turning down, emailed me and said, do you want to write it? And I said, okay. <laughs> What's his name? Like Bobby Crown. Yeah, Bobby. great. The great and patient Bobby. The great, yeah. patient, Very patient, handsome, Very handsome. handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome. Virile, 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 wonderful, uh -huh. um, masculine, uh -huh. amazing. I, 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 Bobby I aspire yes. to be Bobby someday yes. when I grow up. No, so his no, his no, level of patience and tolerance. This is all going on, on someone's recording. Yeah, somebody, so yeah, yeah, no, it's on the podcast. No, I'll, I'll sing Bobby's praise. He has praises the patience well. of a saint. Mm. They should build a stained glass window to him in the Sistine Chapel. Insightful edits. <laughs> Very insightful. insightful. But um, but no, it's uh, that's my story, and I just said okay, <laughs> and that was it. And Eddie, how'd you get up? Um, it was equally as simple. Katie came to me. Do you want to draw it? Yes. Cool. Okay, let's make a book. Um, Done. Yeah. Katie came up to me at a, at a show that we do, and was like, so I think we might be doing something with My Little Pony. Would you like to do it? I said, sure. And then within the month, we're like, we suddenly are signed to a book. And I was like, how'd this happen? <laughs> awesome. I was, that's all. I was, uh, I was doing samples for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is a popular cartoon. Uh, you might have heard of it. And uh, the, the people from Nickelodeon came back and said that my Ninja Turtles were way too cartoony. I don't get that. But that's, <laughs> yeah, they don't do cartoons. They do, they do comic book Ninja Turtles. But, uh, they just started doing a cartoon one. I'm allowed to draw that. But in the interim, they started doing my little pony comics. Or they were about to, and they said, hey, could you do some pony samples? Uh, the great Bobby Kernow asked me to do some pony samples, and I did. And he said, all right, we'll call you. And then they called me. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. And up until number 12, issues 1 through 11 in all the micro series up until Spike, I did at least one cover on every issue. And then now that I'm working on the, the annual, they had to give me a break from covers. So I, I'm breaking my streak. But they've kept me pretty busy since I started working. Would you be allowed to show what you have up here or no? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, especially like that one. There you go. Here's some here's, here's pages. A uh, couple samples. This is going to be great on the podcast. Well, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I can't afford it. your imagination exactly. podcast. Maybe I'll take pictures. There you go. Yeah, there's a, uh, I'm working on Equestria Girls, which are teenage girl versions of the My Little Ponies. And you, I'm just wrong. I have nothing to do with that idea. <laughs> uh, but there you see Applejack, she's sad. Uh, and there's Fluttershy, she's shy and sad. <laughs> this happens right at the end of the third act, which is when everyone gets sad. Or the second act, pardon. Uh, and then here you have a new character uh, who hasn't been an Equestria Girl. She's based on Babs uh, from the cartoon. And she's got a sister, spoilers, uh, and her sister's name is uh, Sunflower. And she's showing up for the first time as a horse or a person uh, in this issue. So, wow. Or a <laughs> 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 yeah, transporter act. I'm gonna do that next. How many pages is the annual film? The annual is 48 pages. Eight pages by these guys. Uh, 40 pages by me and uh, Ted Anderson and Heather Preckle. Who colors the main book? Awesome. So, more questions? Do you all like cartoons? And if so, what other cartoons do you like? What other cartoons do you guys like? I don't like cartoons. Yeah. Ooh, that, that's, I, I was I gonna just, say communists don't like. I just watch. You know, I like exactly. I just watch and uh, no. uh, For me, um, I love cartoons, particularly older cartoons. When I say older, I'm talking Chuck Jones and Bob McKimson, Warner like Brothers, Looney Tunes, classic Warner Brothers. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, the Looney Tunes are a heavy inspiration in the comics. I have a uh, Fritz Freeling Sylvester mug with wow. various Sylvester faces on it that I use for my coffee. And the other day I went looking for it and tearing through the cabinets. Where's my Sylvester mug? It's in the wash. I need it for reference. <laughs> I need my coffee mug. Um, but uh, animation period. Disney, uh, blue. Uh, Don Bluth. Yeah, Don Bluth. I'm not. I'm not a great big fan of CGI. I mean, I think they can do wonderful things, but I want to. I want to see a person's 
drawing them to see what came out of their hand and not what came out of Bush in the body. So. Yeah, for me it's always been cartoons and, and animation. I mean, that's always been one of my biggest influences as a kid is like pausing the Disney movie and trying to draw what's on the screen. Wow. Um, but, you know, the Looney Tunes, old Hanna-Barbera stuff, um, and nowadays, you know, just some of the cartoons that are out right now make me so happy. I'm a big Adventure Time fan. <laughs> with someone that I know. They were like, there's no good cartoons right now. Everything that was in the 90s was so superior. And I was like, one, what? Um, if we're going to go back that far, go to the 80s and talk about Rainbow Bright. But there is so much good stuff right now. Yeah. And I would kill to see Don Crickler come back. Right in the Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, when he came back, it was like, it's not a I, I watched one episode and I was like, that's not my reference to me. Yeah, that's too bad, man. Um, and then, while the animation has nothing really to write home about, I love Bob's Burgers. Oh my god, Bob's Burgers is so good. Bobby, all right. All right. Now, was Disney Adventures? That was technically 90s, and that was a Disney yeah. Afternoon? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like my buddy's had a late 80s, early 90s, yeah. Darkwing Duck and... Uh, Chippendale Chip Rescue Rangers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. That's all great. Yeah, asking, asking someone in comics if they like cartoons is really, do you like pie? You're gonna, yes. <laughs> you're gonna open up the floodgates. We could, we could spend the next two hours talking about cartoons. Oh, but that's you know what? I like, I like cartoons, but I find myself really annoyed when I hear footsteps in cartoons. I don't know why. It drives me crazy. Why don't they belong? I don't know. I, if I hear footsteps in like a real, like a real live action TV show, that's no problem for me. But when I hear like, <laughs> I just try to make sure. Because everybody in a cartoon off screen takes off their shoes and takes off their Yeah, right. I wish. Sure. Oh, I like that. Yeah, the, t the tinny piano kind of thing. Your classic kind of barbara sound. Absolutely. <laughs> so no, I like that. More questions, folks. Keep them rolling. Miss in the blue. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Lauren Foss, but yeah, tell me, because I i thought she was still with the show, so what happened? And, uh, she left... Um, to go do DC Super Friends? Yeah, she friends. left towards the end of season two. Okay. Um, and for people that don't know, Lauren Foss did not create the ponies. The ponies are 31 years old. Yes. Um, she did, however, do the modern design. She, she was the, the breath for a new franchise. But she left to do other projects, um, and uh, the show has changed a little bit here and there. I, d I, don't, I wouldn't say it's for the worse or anything, but you can tell that she's not doing it. Um, as for my favorite writer, wow, um, I think Megan McCarthy is great. Uh, they're all great. Um, we've gotten to meet most of the writers, and they're, they're hysterical, they're wonderful to talk to. Um, I don't know if I can pick one. Yeah, Who's your favorite writer? Oh, thank you, Carson. Yeah, thank you, Carson. I think that they all have like a standout episode that makes them, yeah. you know, like they could be anyone's favorite writer because of that one thing. Um, but as far as Lauren leaving the show, I do not uh, yell at any person who's like, all right, I've done what I can with this. I got to move on to something else. I can't. As a creator, I could never, ever, ever fault someone for that. So I will never yell at her online like some people do. <laughs> like, how dare you leave my little pony? No, she is a creator and she said, well, I made this and now I'm going to move on to make a new thing. Sure. If you like that thing that they make, let them go make a new thing for you right. to like. Right, now there's two things. Yeah, it's like, yeah, now you more. have more things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it's, you know, you got to trust the people that were left in, in care of Pony to try and do what they can with it. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like season three or have some problems with it, but let them finish season four before we're like, well, now it's terrible. <laughs> Do you guys not like season three? Are you cool with season three? Anybody have a problem? Yeah, some people had some issues. I know that All right. like, oh, now that she's left, it's awful. So, sir? I think that season three is too short. That's like... Okay. Yeah, the only problem is too short. No, no, no. All right, yeah, that's fair. That's but season four is full length again. They're doing more episodes. Sir and Red. Yes, sir. Do you have any sneak peeks to season four? 
Uh, we work on the comic book. Yeah, this is the comic book people. So we know. This guy was Tony's uh, art right there. Uh, we and, know and things, but if yeah. we yeah, told you, they would hunt yeah. us down and kill us. I know stuff, but that's can't say it. Um, I was just sent a non disclosure agreement in my email Friday that I have to sign before I can go any further, before they will even tell me what they need to tell me. That's my sign this, then we'll tell you. So. <laughs> I saw a hand in the back, Lady of the Grave, right there, yeah. You could import any fictional character into the Pony Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> We're going to be here a while. Colossus. <laughs> that's awesome. That's like, that's like dropping your G.I. Joe in the middle of like a Transformers. Well, he's a farmer. That's good. Like it's all Russian up. steel pony. Yeah. I like that. Who would you want to see in there? Yeah. Yeah. You want to see a Dalek? Wow. Danger. I'd like to see the moments going against a Dalek. That's kind of, and it's kind of a fair fight. Considering there, like anything that we can think of, we have already dropped in there. <laughs> it's just we can put anything we want, except for a Dalek, because that would be a little obvious. Um, but no, it's any, you know, like, uh, 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 Andy has put God knows what. In the I was just about to point. say, I want to put a Stephen King character, and then I realized, Oh, we yeah. already did. Yeah, we've it. It's in there. We have Pennywise from Pennywise it. Pennywise from it. It's hilarious. Um, wow. Any? I guess the one thing that I wanted was the guy from Temple of Doom saying, Call him on. I made Andy. Well, we're done. <laughs> we've done. And that was it. So I'm, I'm done. Let's see. We've done Mala Ram, and we've done the Phantom of the Opera, and we've done Pennywise from it, and we did an Evil Dead 2 reference. And All of them are really dark. Let's see the Pony Justice League. Ooh. 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 Gas the audience. Like because having an Aquaman pony means we get to see a sea, sea pony. Horse. Sea and horse. there's four sea pony going, I'm the lame and no one likes it. Oh, hey, one have to wear an orange shirt. I can't hold my trident with my flipper. <laughs> This. Is Ditsy Doo going to be back in season four? Come on. That's um, season four. We don't. We don't know about yeah. that. Yeah. No spoilers, kids. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. When it can, I. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> this on the end. Yeah. What's your opinion on Twilight? What's your opinion on? I love the fact that Twilight is now a princess. I like it. Haters gonna hate. And uh, here you go. They just gave my daughter a princess role model that earned the title of being a princess by being smart and loyal and all of that good stuff that I want my daughter to be. She didn't inherit it. She didn't marry it. She earned it. So, <laughs> that's my opinion on Princess Twilight. And it is badass. When so, it boils down on the show, you know, this, this is a show for kids. Let's, keep, let's remember that. And so all the shows have a little lessons or little morals. Every episode is a morality play. And so when you think about that in the long term, she learned how to have friends. She learned how to be loyal. She learned all these qualities that earned her a crown. Mm -hmm. And that's better than going, oh, well, here's Princess Sleeping Beauty or Princess whatever, who's just born into it. And Shiny so Armor's the one that married into it. He married into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to marry rich. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going to make myself a prince. <laughs> so I, I, think it's, I think it's great because um, it shows that they're willing to make the characters grow, they're just not stagnant, so we're going to advance and see what's new. Mm -hmm. so. Young lady in the, in the back there? Yeah, you. Yep. Um, do you make comics every day for My Little Pony? Yes. Do you make comics every day for My Little Pony? Uh, well, this weekend we have. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to put a line or two down every day. Yeah. Uh, um, we work on them a lot. Um, Especially when we're late, like we are right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, we work a little bit 
every day here and there, even if it's nothing but coming up with ideas. Do a little yeah. bit of work every day. Right. And it's, you know, there's also other, pro you know, I know I have other projects. I have stuff due for Star Wars okay. and, and stuff like that. I do a lot of stuff for Star Wars and Lucasfilm and Scholastic. Um, I have my own comic that I also need to draw every week. Wow. And 10 bajillion other things. I also have to raise a child. Um, so sleep is a foreign concept. <laughs> Come by their tables and really see not only the pony stuff but the other stuff that they do because really like I love Katie's comic rock and I think a lot of pony fans would like it too. It's very sweet. It's really funny, it breaks my heart it's awesome. So, yeah, rock is good. what got Katie the pony job. Yeah. Because the, editor, you the editor is a fan of my webcomic. Absolutely. So. so and I'm really glad everyone has questions because we are going to be able to get to everybody. So uh, I see a young man right there in blue, is it a young man? I think it is. Yes? Um, who is your favorite Kitty Mark Crusader and why? Oh, your favorite which one? Uh, Kitty Mark Crusader. Crusader. Uh, Scootaloo, because she's got an awesome haircut. <laughs> <laughs> stole mine. I like that. Sorry, you can sense sense yes, of that. but is it because of the haircut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mine wasn't because it was awesome, it was because it was the easiest haircut to draw. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I, I have to look at Scootaloo, I mean, uh, Sweetie Belle's hair every, every time. time I draw her. Yeah. What is, what, it curls in which direction? It goes away. And it changes. Um, my favorite is Apple Glow. Um, I want my cutie mark. I want it now. I, I honestly think that <laughs> Apple Glow's cutie mark is going to be frustration. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie uh, Belle's might be pyromania. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, the plan. Yep, you. Yes, you. Repeat the question because I can't hear. Hippocampus? Are we adding hippocampus? Will we be adding hippocampus to the book? So horses have tails. So yeah. I I was going to say all horses have tails. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mythological horse, aquatic horse, like a seahorse. Oh. Um, you know, I drew one on the No cover. comment. Yeah, we got no comment. Uh -oh. Uh oh, that's good though, man. That, that's a good. That's a good sign. So that's promising. Sir in the red. Um, have you guys ever thought about adding an assassin's creed pony? Of course. Never have I just said I'm not allowed to kill anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just for the yeah. adult subject matter. It's it's a say. point of contention between me and Hasbro. Let me tell you, um, but. Um, the ponies don't get to die, although one of them's in a coffin in an episode, so you know what? A little yeah. shenanigans on that. There is a funeral. I will get to the repeat questions, but I want to get people who haven't had a chance yet. Uh, the gentleman then all the way in the back. Could you add a war horse A war horse mm -hmm. that, that Spielberg movie, War Horse? Have you that. seen War Horse? I have not seen it. Remember that movie from that, last year? That movie that has Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know anybody saw War Horse. It starts there. I, just, I, just I, I live movie. with a guy that teaches film, and I haven't even seen it. Yeah. I'm gonna see War Horse just there. for you, and put War Horse in there. Go ahead. What you thought? The book. The book. The book's better? better. Book is better. Look, I have okay. comics to draw. I'm gonna just watch the movie if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. Who, yes. Alright. Um, I know you guys were on issues 1 through 4, and then again for 9 through 12. Mm -hmm. Are you guys on for 13 and on, or...? Uh, nope. Uh, 13 and 14 is another team, uh, so we can work on something special. Um, and then I think they're doing another two after that, and then Andy and I are back on for another four issue arc Absolutely. after that. Cool. Is issue math. Okay. Issue, yeah. yeah. Issue Do math. Um, and uh, and that's what issues we do after that, and add four to that. In between is the pirates, right? Yeah, the pirates. Yeah, um, okay. which is um, Brenda Hickey and uh, Heather Friday, and Brenda Hickey, who did the Applejack micro issue, uh, is going to be doing the art for the pirate story. Cool. She um, is a great pony artist. Yeah. She is great. She's we just great. got to meet her, and she was she was really nice, and her art was wonderful. Her husband writes and draws Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> And she draws ponies. So they just sit around and have fun all day long. Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Doctor Who, all the way in the back. Uh, what was your 
opinion on the whole Derby fiasco? There's two types. Yeah, it's all right though. No, <laughs> there's, 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 there's a lot of ties. Which fiasco, sir? The whole Derby Hoops fiasco after the last round of ridiculous. All right. Um, ridiculous. I'm going to tell you the true story behind it because there are so many rumors about soccer moms and all this. And can I get a clarification? For yeah, the, me too. For the okay. Sake of the podcast. Um, if you guys know the character of Derby Hoops, who is also sometimes called Ditsy Do, uh, Derby is a cockeyed, boss-eyed, boss-eyed oh. character that was an animation accident. That's how she started. Um, if you watch the show carefully, there's a lot of animation accidents, but she was one that stood out because she had the wonky eye. And somebody went, hey, look at that goofy pony. <laughs> I like her. And so they repeated her. Um, and then in uh, an episode, she actually had a couple of lines. And she talks like this? You okay, Rainbow Dash? She talks yeah. like the vulture in the funny person. <laughs> <laughs> She's very clumsy and everything, and Rainbow calls her by name, Derby. And then when the episode went to iTunes, iTunes said, we find this offensive, and we're worried that somebody else is going to find it offensive, so edit it before somebody complains. There were no true complaints. No soccer mom came out and said, I don't like this, which is the popular contention. It was iTunes that said, cut it before somebody complains. So when the show was put on iTunes, it was edited, her name was taken out, and her voice was changed. So instead of, you okay, Rainbow Dash? Now it's, are you okay, Rainbow Dash? Excuse me, Rainbow Dash. <laughs> I wonder if you're safe or not. So. Excuse me, good sir. I am wondering if you doth hurt your posterior as you fall through that floor. I have a PhD, even though I am a pony. And I even though I'm a cockeyed. This is a fact hasn't stopped me from my forefathers. Yeah. But on all merchandise of the character, her name is not on it. Uh huh. She's um, uh, portrayed by a muffin. Always. There's a new box set of toys coming out this fall with Derby in it, and in every, on the back is everybody's name, except hers, Aww. and there's a picture of a muffin. <laughs> so, it's a big controversy, I like that. Man. But Derby has continued in the show, um, and fans made such a big deal out of, the, out of this, and she was not on the show for a little while, and they thought, oh god, you know, now they've, they've done her away. And if you pay attention to the season three finale when Twilight gets her wings, Derby is in almost every other scene. <laughs> she's constant through the episode to say, hey, she's still here. We can't say her name, but she's still here. Crazy. So. All right, other Doctor Who. The third Doctor Who. <laughs> not, not actually John Kirby, but you know <laughs> Awesome, Derby <laughs> Magnum. Very nice, man. No comment. No comment. No comment. Uh, well, that's a good sign. There's no comment. You might be honest. No, no comment. comment. I'm speaking for myself. I, I won't speak for the creative team. That's all right. Sir. No, no, sure. no actually, the person behind you there. No, we'll get to you. I was wondering if you will sing the theme song for us. No comment. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, uh, could you comment on the rumors of a possible Luna uh, micro series issue? <laughs> No comment! Okay. That's a double second. Just check it. Okay. Totally. And now you'll Okay. I think you should put a fat green pony in your comic and name it Jabba the Pony. Ooh, a fat green pony and name it Jabba the Pony. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Many of the ponies are quite <laughs> physically fit. I would say all the ponies are physically shaped the same size. Yeah, because that's one more body shape we all yeah. need to learn how to draw. We already got snow <laughs> yeah. I got I figured out how to draw uh, tall grown-up ponies, medium-sized Luna ponies, regular ponies, and fillies and babies. I'm not doing fat, super thin, <laughs> or anything. Wait until you get to pointy-butted, under-bite, yeah, cake, no. Mr. Cake pony. Oh, God. <laughs> I never realized, 
Jeff paid attention. He's got a pointy butt. <laughs> the gentleman around. Oh, pony butted Mr. What are your favorite songs from the series? What are your favorite songs from the series? Probably the one from Sweet and Elite. Okay. Um, yeah. Or Pink. My daughter is infatuated with the Pinkie Pie Smile song. Blink, so. blink, blink. <laughs> How are you? Young lady? I will like to put out a request for no more male alicorns that are black with maroon hair and have 17 cutie marks because you can't decide what your special talent is. Because <laughs> if I have to draw one more of those. The only thing that I will say about the OC is that I, can, I cannot fathom is how much fan artwork I have seen of crying Sad, sad or ponies. dying ponies in the rain. <laughs> in the rain, <laughs> standing over a grave. And I was just, oh. I was, oh I was telling Katie, I was like, you know, there's so much pony art of these ponies crying in the rain at night. <laughs> and then I was at a convention, and this girl came up to me and she said, "Would you mind looking at my artwork?" I said, sure. And it was crying ponies in the rain <laughs> at night. And it was the exact art I was just describing to Katie. And I was like, oh my god. And I'm like, it's you. It's a, it's a happy show. It's so happy. You can be happy. It's okay. It's so happy. No, but What's I wrong think with being happy? OCs and making your own comics are great yeah. because it's, it's creativity. And if it's the show that launches you creatively, you know, don't do just ponies and OCs do everything, but if that's what gets you going, then it's awesome. Nuts. Our OCs are in the book. We're in the book. We're canon. We're canon. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with your life lately? <laughs> I made Andy draw me as a pony. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think it's wonderful um, to see so many, we have so many fans come up to us, especially kids, which is wonderful showing us their drawings, or this is me as a pony, or this is my mom as a pony, or, it's so and it's, it's, it's awesome. But yeah, it's, uh, my big thing is uh, I get into like altercations with people when they have a like overly complicated cutie mark. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm so good at these eight different things that I need these eight things on my, on my horse's butt. It's like, no, <laughs> pick one. <laughs> I had to draw an alter a super complicated cutie mark in the Fluttershy micro series. Barbara Kiesel, the writer, said, uh, This guy is an art critic, and on his butt he has uh, a canvas with a painting on it and an axe going through the canvas. <laughs> oh my god! And it's like this big in every panel. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, somebody figured it out and, like, on DeviantArt, recreated it perfectly. So, uh, yeah, and, it's, um, awesome. and if your OC is an alicorn, you need to explain to me what you did to deserve to be a princess. Because I will ask, and if I don't think that you deserve to be a princess, I will say, now you have to pick. <laughs> because you don't get to be an alicorn. Wow. Because you're not a princess. Ah, I didn't know alicorn is a wing horn pony. Yeah. All right, very good. And princess you are, Celestia. You are royalty. You need to explain to me how you're royalty. I guess you could be related. Yeah, I like it. Sir, in the uh, yeah, in the shepherds and glasses. I was wondering, what are your thoughts on Sombra, like the ages of magical make up and plot device? And do you think it's a shame? <laughs> and do you think that it's a shame that uh, Shining Armor and Princess Cadence are not Emperor and Empress on the first one? I don't really think they need to be Emperor and Empress. They it's like they just rule over that land. It was like, we don't like you anymore, so go off and live in the Crystal Empire. Um, you know, Tony mentioned that he thought it should be Queen Celestia because you know, she rules mm -hmm. everything. Lauren Faust wrote it as Queen Celestia. And Hasbro said, no, queens are evil. Princesses are good. <laughs> Historically in true fantasy very, fiction. That is true. Very Absolutely. And that's why it is Princess Celestia and Queen Chrysalis. So when you start saying like Empress Cadence, she's, she's, she's Empress Cadence Palpatine to me. <laughs> <laughs> that means she's got 
file drawers full of evil plans. You know, I believe I believe English Derby would say absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. 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 Samra just wasn't used correctly, um, and I, I think that's probably a fault of editing um, the story down from whatever script they had because he didn't have enough of his backstory or enough enough time for him to shine as a villain like Chrysalis did. I mean, his only line was, ah. <laughs> which is poor Jim Miller. Um, who works on the show, and he was like, I finally got to be a voice on the show, and everyone hates me. Yeah. <laughs> I think Sombra's the kind of character that, um, they, you know, they have a design, but they have no personality. There's nothing there to, to go with, so they can come back to him and do whatever, anything. So the door's still open on, on Sombra. Um, the young lady there on the end? What is your theory behind Applejack's parents? Dead. <laughs> 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 and said, like young, young Applejack and her parents were walking through an alley one night in Gotham. I thought that was true. Awesome. Applejack has risen above <laughs> the events that she has viewed as a child um, to become the knight. <laughs> We, we have theories, but as far as uh, the episode that, um, I forget the name of the episode, in season three that, yeah, the, the family reunion, if you pay attention, there are two stars that fly over the house. When she's looking up, and like when you gaze longingly out at the night sky and two little comets fly by, let's just go with what they're implying. And <laughs> Pay attention because she looks sad and Granny Smith cheers her up. Mm -hmm. And the writers were implying that that meant that her parents were gone. Um, as to what happened to them, they were I'm, in sure alley that Gotham. I'm, sure that, <laughs> I'm sure they've had thresher accidents on that farm. There are, things happen on farms on all On farms the all the time. Young lady in front with the pink scarf. How do you feel about Sunset Shimmer? Tony? I love her. I love, her. I love any teenage girl My Little Ponies. I think they are, uh, I don't like drawing their hands. I got really <laughs> used to just drawing hoops that just end in a, a straight line. Uh, but yeah, I like Sunset Shimmer. I think she's a lot of fun. I have no problem with her whatsoever. I liked writing her little, uh, I wrote a little eight painter that we did for a San Diego exclusive that's going in the annual. That was kind of her party ways uh, from Celestia as a pony and she's, you know, snotty and you know, pompous, and she's like, I deserve more in life, which is every teenager. You know, you wrote her like Satan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not like, like the actual Satan. I wrote Lucifer. her as a teenage girl. <laughs> yeah. Like, Tony, she if was, any of you have ever been a teenage girl, it's awful. Tony was a teenage girl. She that's felt she was better than Princess Celestia and was cast out. Mm -hmm. She had to live far away from Princess Celestia in what would some call hell. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. 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 Four years of purgatory. The young lady in the Adventure Time uh, hat? Um, if you could change it, like, if you were to show what would you do? Probably uh, cadences, because it's hard to draw tiny. Yeah. It is hard to draw. Um, that would probably be my thing, is I hate drawing Twilight's cutie mark. I would simplify that one. Yeah. Way down to just the one star. I would make them simpler to draw yeah. for me. Yeah, we are, we're biased because we have to draw them this big. That might be why I like Applejack so much, three, three level circles. <laughs> Am I right? Are there three questions left? Thanks. Snow White, go ahead. Hi. <laughs> and uh, for me, it's writing her and not just using her as a as a device to get the joke. You have to make the joke make sense. is really fun. Uh, you'll notice in the first four issues of My Little Pony, 
uh, she always has the last laugh in every single issue. She's always got the last laugh. And I think that's really important to me. It's that pinky. Uh, her humor needs to make sense, um, which is why I don't like the joke in the show of like, cinnamon bun. Um, I think that it's really random. And it's like, no, Pinky's randomness needs to make sense, like her, her pinky sense and, and stuff like that. So I think she's really fun to write for. Ronnie? Um, what is your opinion on cupcakes? What is your opinion on cupcakes? I like cupcakes as a food. Um, what are we talking about? Well, we need to stop you right there and say that we actually stay away from fan we can't, fiction. We can't, to watch, we can't watch the fan stuff. We don't oh, read the fan fiction. No. Okay. Um, so, cupcakes as a dessert are fantastic. I am six months pregnant. I love cupcakes. So, uh, you know what, I ate a peanut butter pie last night. I mean, it was great. Um, we have a lot of people that ask us about, oh, did you do this from the fan fiction or did you get this? And no. And the reason that we avoid the fan fiction is that if we were to do something, if we were to see your fan fiction, and that some of it actually showed up in the comic book, that can make problems. Um, even if you say, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to do anything, here's my story, you know, do with it as you please, we can't do that. We can't. That's legal reasons, not just, oh, we want to do our own thing. No. That Hasbro's lawyers would have a fit, um, and also the fan fiction—that's their stuff. We want to do our stuff. So everything that you see in the comics is something that we've come up with or has leaked into our heads, but we we stay away from it. What do you think of cupcakes? Tom? You know, it's a good one because uh, the Seven Eleven red velvet cupcake is surprisingly <laughs> delicious. It's probably the best food they have at Seven Eleven. Red velvet cupcake. Are great anyway. Yeah. Yes. And I, so I would think even like a fast foodie version. I've had some bad ones, but 7-Elevens is a top. My wife food. likes to take cupcakes and cut them in half and put the bottom on the top so that she has an icing sandwich. <laughs> That's the way it is. Smart man. Creativity just runs yeah. rampant in the price house. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Young lady. Is it another dessert question? I hope so. <laughs> Oh, any more world or character building? Are you still going? Well, uh, why did these go ahead and answer that right now? Because it's a rock farm. <laughs> you know, Tony grew up on a rock farm. Too. He's come a long way. When he was a teenager. I'm going to give you a, a direct answer. No comment. <laughs> Stay awesome. Awesome. Just. And it's already. Um, uh, well, the, the GM. They've already announced the, well, no, the, the GM Barrow novel, like her novelization. Yeah. Uh-oh. Somebody's going to get a secret. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, no, but yes. that's out. That's yes. out. In one of the actual, like, little, little, like, written books that um, GM Barrow does, she touches on that a lot more in Pinkie Pie's family. Yeah. Um, so there is an established, like, thing that's out, nothing that I'm breaking confidence on. Right. Of, um of Pinky's life on the rock farm and actually names her sisters, which made me really mad because I liked the idea that their names were Inky and Blinky and Clyde. Um, and she gave them different names. I was like, why'd you do that? Um, yeah. But uh, but no, it's, um, but she does little, like, young adult uh, books that are like, and, you know, they're cute. There's like three or four of them now, and they are, they are sanctioned by Hasbro just like we are, so they are. There's a, a, a Twilight one, a Pinkie Pie one, and. Very. I forget. But um, we just got to meet her briefly, and just like us, you know, she works through Hasbro, and we all make sure that we're not overlapping each other or contradicting each other, so we're trying to do this very. Let me put the excerpts of those in the, in the comments, too? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, I see four more questions, so I want to get to them quickly, because we're, we're at an hour, but I mean, if you guys are cool ask, answering them, I, I got nothing going on. I can do uh, a couple more. Okay, so lightning fast, Dr. Who? What is your personal opinion on Brony's sister? 99.8% of you are delightful. <laughs> Absolutely amazing really and delightful. And then there's that 
that point. <laughs> but that's any fandom. Yeah, that is absolutely. And you guys dressed as Doctor Who. Oh man, do I have a story about a Doctor Who fan for you that blows any brony story I have out of the water? Just stop on my table and come at me. Exactly. We've been comic book fans our whole life. Like we understand yeah. what it's like to care about yeah. something way more than you're supposed to. But no, it's it's any fandom has that 0.2 percent. So I mean, bronies are are any other fandom. And uh, the only issue I've now had with a fandom were how crazy. The Homestuck people are. I didn't even know what Homestuck was until like three seconds ago. And they're crazy! Oh my god! It's a bunch of people running around all rambling! <laughs> <laughs> Young lady in the glasses. Yes? Uh, what do you guys think of the PowerPoints? What do you think of the PowerPoints? Of the what? Oh, sorry. Oh, the season four, that's not, oh, they, okay. they showed that at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's, I think it's probably going to be Spike's Dream or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, cool. Why not? That's awesome. I'm saying I think it's it. great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, gentleman in the Carter Blue uh, shirt, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you all, and congratulations, Katie, on your pregnancy. Thank you. Awesome. I had something to do with it. They know what causes that. Congratulations. Do you guys plan on doing, like, any holiday specials? I would like holiday to. Specials. I'd like to. Um, we, we the time, the timing in comics is weird because things have to be done months and months and months in advance. But we would like to. Yeah. All right. Close this out, kid. Red. Atta boy. Um, if you guys could change one thing from the series, what would you change? Ooh, what would you change? One thing from the series. Tony. He's thinking. I got nothing. Tony has nothing. It's also perfect. I don't know. <laughs> That's why you guys all like. It. I would like to make sure, not that I want this changed, I want to make sure that the Cutie Mark Crusaders never get their Cutie Mark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never want it shown. I never want to know what they are. Because you jumped the shark. With, I want, then they're done. I want the very, yeah, the very yeah. last episode of My Little Pony, when, God forbid, it is canceled. They should be on their way to getting it throughout the entire episode, and they keep looking down going, <gasps> And it's not there. And then in the very last three seconds, you know it's coming. They all look down, and they go, ah! And it goes black. And you just hear Apple going, ah, oh, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> and I never want to know what they are, because that's over for me. Because you know what? I bet Apple Blooms has an apple on it. I'll bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> just going to throw that out there. And Sweetie Belt will probably have a musical note, and Scootaloos will be something about scooting. And that's not fun. It is fun when they are crazy kids who are like, I wonder what I'm good at in life. And the second you get rid of that, the characters are dead to me. They're gone. You may as well just put them in a box and tape them up, and they're gone. They're... I don't want to know what about them. Not actually dead children. Don't dead children. Not actually dead children. They just resolve their problems. Problem. Tell That's us how you really feel. But I never, ever, 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 ever want them to keep I'm not, I'm not getting what you're saying, but all right. Yeah. That's all right. And there you go. And that is an unpopular opinion to some people who are like, I want to make sure that they know what their special talent is. No. <laughs> they are full of potential. They say that right in the show. I yeah. want them to forever be capable of whatever they want. And that's great. But I also want Apple Bloom to be frustrated, and I want Sweetie Belle to be annoying, and I want Scootaloo to roll her eyes at both of them and say, I am really above this. I think, um, I don't know if I would necessarily change anything, but one thing that I would really like to see is, Celestia is a very, very difficult character to write for because she's essentially, you know, Celestia and Luna are Superman. You know, they have all the power, you know, one raises the sun and one raises the moon. So there are, Celestia is very difficult to write for. I'd like to see an episode where they just allow Celestia to cut loose and just see all of her power. And so, but that's just me. I like it. Ooh, that's a good kind of philosophical ending and everything. You guys asked great questions, and they gave us great answers. So thank you very much for coming. Vulcans in My Little Pony, can we do that? They are. Uh, oh, it's, 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 it's,